Still Jabal drives. Good! No pro basketball player in history has given a scoreboard as much to do as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. With his trademark skyhook, a rainbow that rarely missed. Kareem with a big pressure shot. The one-time Milwaukee Buck you are watching what greatness is all about. turned L.A. Laker legend, racked up an astounding 38,387 points during his 20-year career. Add to that his six MVPs and six NBA championships, and you've got one of the greatest centers to ever play the game. It's all etched beneath his new statue, towering outside the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles. I was lucky to be able to, to play as long as I did. You know, I worked hard at my conditioning, and I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, he says, all those stats aren't the only measure of his life. I think worrying about stats is like being petty. You did what you did, and... Yeah, and people appreciated it, so you can't do better than that. You know? If he seems a bit understated, well, that's as much a part of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's persona as his seven-foot, two-inch frame. There was always a mystique about him, not just because he was a Catholic turned Muslim, not because he hailed Malcolm X or boycotted the 1968 Olympics. It was because as a player, he was almost unmatched, but as a personality, he seemed just out of reach. You had the reputation of being aloof and kind of a loner. That's how it ended up because I, I was so on guard about giving away anything that would be embarrassing. What delayed uh, the at least two press conferences you had said? Well, I was trying to find out what I, exactly what I was going to do. It, um, I'm not the most mature person in the world, and I was confused. As a result, he not only tried to avoid the press, but he usually avoided his fans, too. The spotlight is tough, you know, and it caused some burnout. Um, I didn't handle it in the best way. Do you think you were just overwhelmed by the celebrity of it all? Of course I was overwhelmed by it. Uh, that's not for ordinary people. <laughs> and your reaction to it was just to sort of... Withdraw. I, I, I withdrew. He's hardly withdrawn anymore. He just finished competing in the ABC reality show Splash, a diving competition that had new fans cheering even his flops. Oh! For a guy in his mid-60s, it was an athletic achievement, especially given that just a few years ago... It just didn't feel right. It wasn't right. He was mind. told he had a very rare form of leukemia. You hear the word leukemia mentioned in conjunction with your name. It's a scary moment. So your first thought was probably just survival. Yeah, survival was the first thing. I, I was, like, really did not understand how, how much longer I, I was going to be living. He got treatment, and while he's not in remission, he's holding the cancer at bay, and now travels the country, giving hope to other leukemia survivors. Just keep doing what you've been doing, and uh, you know we, we're going to lick this thing. Since his retirement 23 years ago, promoting better education has become his passion. Good block, Willie. For all ages. We're honored and privileged to have the greatest player in the history of the game and the greatest Bruin. It all started here at UCLA. You can go back to your communities and make a difference. While he was one of the most dominant players in the NCAA, off the court, he took such an interest in English and history that he decided to major in both. Are these your folks at graduation? Proud day, huh? Proud day for me, yeah. Uh, I'm the first person in my family to get a college degree. He used it well. Kareem has since written more than half a dozen books all highlighting the historical and cultural contributions of African Americans and everything from World War II to the invention of the light bulb. He's found a new audience for that skyhook of his, too. It's in a classroom. Those bags he's tossing out are bags of potato chips, a reminder to kids that one of their favorite snacks came from a scientist, not a sports hero or a celebrity. The potato chip was invented by a black American. His name was George Crumb. They all think they have to be LeBron James or, or, or Jay-Z or, or Denzel Washington. You know, <laughs> they got to get beyond that. On the shoulders of giants. He even produced this highly acclaimed 2011 documentary. But I want to tell you guys about the best team you never heard of. It's the inspiring story of the Harlem Rens, an all-black basketball team that the sporting world all but forgot. The Rennie was already known for great bands and great dancing. Now they place baskets at either end. 
This was a dance floor. You slid. And when they moved the ball around, it was a show. They used to play here at the Renaissance Ballroom on 138th Street in Harlem. Much to Kareem's disappointment, it's long since been boarded up. They were the pride of Harlem in that uh, they kind of got to the point where they were the best basketball team in the country, but they couldn't get recognized because they weren't white. It's really interesting. Uh, His frustration with the lack of recognition of so many African Americans began early. This, uh, Before this changing his really name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which incidentally means noble, powerful um, servant, he was known as Lou Alcindor, born in New York just two years after the end of World War II. He never lived in Harlem, but its rich culture, its jazz and art stuck with him, as did what happened on its basketball courts. This is, this is like our, what, home court? These were known as the battlegrounds. Guys were very aggressive, you know. It was, uh, people played, it was like a blood game, you know. It wasn't. <laughs> he made his mark here. What's your name, tough guy? And at his Catholic high school. But many still had their doubts. Everybody told me I was too skinny to make it in professional ranks. Did they really? Oh, yeah. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's a lot of different ways to play the game. He found his way to play the game, and he found his spot in Hollywood. Listen, kid. I've been hearing that crap ever since I was at UCLA. I'm out there busting my buns every night. Who could forget Kareem playing co-pilot Roger Murdoch in Airplane? It's so famous that on a recent flight overseas, Kareem had to relive it. He invited you into the cockpit? The pilot seat took me into the cockpit, strapped me in. <laughs> I took off in the cockpit with them. And he said, we wanted to tell everybody that we flew with Murdoch. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? But out of all his accolades, yeah, the trophy he was That's most excited to show us Doesn't was this one. Much, but this is the very first trophy that I got for playing Little League. And, baseball. Uh, baseball, yeah. <laughs> you heard right. Baseball is his first love, not basketball. In the eighth grade, I threw the ball 95 miles an hour. In the eighth grade? But, um, you know, it might go anywhere. You know? <laughs> so, it's a problem. His fans are all a little richer that a growth spurt took him to the basketball court instead. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has just stood so the know, test of time. Who's number one here? Not just as a player, but as a person. It doesn't bother me that people remember me only as an athlete. I've been more than that. I think my life has proven that. So, uh, just the fact that people might think about remembering me is, is enough for me. You know, I'll take that. 